When can Elon Musk's SpaceX make its first orbital flight with a Starship rocket? And will SpaceX get the Federal Aviation Administration's approval for this flight? Those are two questions that space fans must have been curious about in the past. So in today's episode, join us in tackling this burning topic. But first, if you're new to our channel, a sincere welcome from the great SpaceX team. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification feature so you won't miss out any of SpaceX's latest news on our channel. Without any further delay, let's get started on today's episode of Great SpaceX. In the previous episode, we showed you that Elon Musk's SpaceX had completed two test firings of the engines on its Starship 20 prototype on Thursday, as the company prepares for the rocket's first orbital launch while the Federal Aviation Administration reviews its license request. This was a major hurdle for the spacecraft ahead of its first orbital flight test, which SpaceX had previously stated would likely happen within a couple of months. But now, SpaceX founder Elon Musk has said that the launch could happen as soon as next month. Musk tweeted after a successful static fire, If all goes well, Starship will be ready for its first orbital launch attempt next month, pending regulatory approval. In addition, Musk always wants Starship to be fully reusable, with both the rocket and its booster capable of landing after a launch to be recovered for future flights. SpaceX's Falcon 9 rockets are partially reusable. The company can regularly land and relaunch the boosters, but not the upper portion or stage of the rocket. Earlier this week, Musk emphasized that full and rapid reusability is the holy grail of orbital rocketry. He was also responding to a report that small rocket builder Rocket Lab is making advancements in recovering and reusing its Electron vehicles. However, SpaceX's next major step in testing Starship is launching to orbit. First, the company needs a launch license from the FAA for the mission. But will SpaceX get FAA approval? The FAA is performing an environmental assessment of SpaceX's facilities and operations in Boca Chica, Texas. Earlier this week, it held two public virtual hearings for members of the public to give feedback on the process. SpaceX has rapidly expanded its facility, which it calls Starbase since development work on Starship began in earnest in early 2019. The public hearings featured a wide dichotomy of testimonies, with 120 speakers in total. Commenters included those expressing wholehearted support of Musk and the Starship project, with many calling in from out of state. Criticism came from representatives of local environmental groups. Fans of SpaceX attended the meetings to show their support for the company's efforts. A common theme among the supporters was that, while they did not live in Texas or near Boca Chica, they wished to see SpaceX continue working and launching from the area. I don't live near Texas, I have no stake in this currently, one commenter said. But I would just like to say that SpaceX is doing an amazing job in Texas and that I would like to see this process move a bit faster. Another commenter said, I'm a Georgia resident not representing any organization or special interest group. I'm speaking on behalf of my personal capacity as an enthusiastic supporter of SpaceX and a supporter of the human enterprise to push mankind's boundary beyond Earth. Some fans of the company argued that SpaceX is bringing jobs and economic growth to Brownsville, the city next to Boca Chica, but most talked about being inspired by the company and their belief that Starship work must continue so that humanity can become a multi-planet species. A common term used by SpaceX CEO Elon Musk. SpaceX's Starship system has yet to carry passengers or reach orbit, but the company hopes to fly people on the vehicle to Mars someday. SpaceX also holds a contract with NASA to develop Starship as a lunar lander that can take astronauts to the surface of the moon. Some who identified as residents in the area also expressed support. I love you SpaceX and I love you Elon Musk too. Another woman living in the area noted that she slowly but surely have watched a rocket rise from the dunes of the beach and it's been an honor and a privilege to be able to see something magical created out of this world. So what do those who oppose SpaceX say? 
Plenty of nearby residents were adamantly opposed to SpaceX's plans. Common complaints revolved around access to the nearby beach. Roads are frequently closed in Boca Chica to accommodate major testing and test launches. They're not considering us, a resident said. My personal experience having to want to go to the beach and the road is always closed, where they have promised that we will not be affected. Others denounced the debris that has fallen on the ground during major test failures. One test launch in March ended in an explosion that sprayed chunks of metal and rocket parts across the terrain surrounding the Boca Chica launch site. Apart from that, noise and rumblings from successful launch tests were also a big point of contention. Critics representing environmental groups joined the calls to express concerns about SpaceX construction and operations harming the surrounding wetlands and endangered species, including birds called plovers that nest in the area. Others also worried about the vague nature of SpaceX's plans to build a natural gas plant in the area to provide methane for the rockets. Without details, they say the impacts of a plant are difficult to assess. In response, supporters argued that Cape Canaveral, Florida, home of the USA's busiest spaceport, also operates near a wildlife preserve. A lot of critics demanded that the FAA conduct a second Environmental Impact Statement, or EIS which the agency already did for SpaceX's Boca Chica site in 2014. However, the FAA conducted that review when SpaceX originally planned to fly its smaller Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy rockets from the area, with up to 12 planned commercial launches a year. Starship is substantially bigger than SpaceX's other rockets and still has years of development ahead. The FAA says the company plans to fly Starship up to 20 times a year during flight tests in the early years of development. The FAA says it will weigh all comments equally, including the ones submitted in writing. After evaluating all of the feedback, the FAA will respond and incorporate them before publishing a final PEA sometime after the comment period closes on November 1st. The agency could release a finding of no significant impact or FONSI for SpaceX's launch site before continuing on with the launch licensing process. Or the FAA could decide to conduct another EIS, a choice that would certainly prolong SpaceX's plans to conduct an orbital launch from Boca Chica as soon as possible. There are still a lot of legal issues involved for SpaceX to receive FAA approval, but we can still hope that the Starship orbital flight plan will go according to Elon Musk's predictions, specifically at the end of November. And that's all the information we have for you today. Do you think Musk's prediction will go through as planned, or do you believe there's going to be still more hurdles to jump through? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. If you like what my team and I are doing and would like to help us with a little nudge, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Think of it as buying us all a round of coffee for a job well done. Everyone's support will be the motivation for us to create more quality content. Otherwise, thumbs up if you enjoyed today's episode, subscribe if you haven't already, and be sure to hit the bell so you won't miss out on future episodes of Great SpaceX. And be sure to leave a comment about your thoughts. We always get a kick out of reading them. As always, this is Kevin, and my team and I will see you next time.